Hello everyone and welcome to Dundas Dashboard How To Videos. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of installing and configuring Dundas Dashboard. Before you begin the installation, make sure that you have downloaded and installed the deployment center from our support site and you have the installation key ready with you. The Deployment Center is an application that allows you to install, upgrade, and maintain your dashboard instances. So this is the Deployment Center. To begin installation, open this up by double-clicking on it. You can also find this under Start Menu Programs. So once the Deployment Center opens, click on Installation. Here you'll see four options. The first one is to install the Dashboard Express, which is an instance with minimum configuration and is useful when you quickly want to install the dashboard on your desktop or on your laptop and is mostly useful for the business users who don't want to deal with the technical details of the configuration. Keep in mind that with this option, an instance of SQL Server Express also gets installed under the name DDSQL Express. This is because Dundas Dashboard requires SQL Server for its application databases in order for it to run. The second option which I'll use here is to install the new Dashboard instance. This is a full configuration and is used by the technical users who want to configure the database server settings as well as other options. The third option is to upgrade the dashboard, which is used to upgrade your existing instance from an older version to a newer version. And the last option is to uninstall your dashboard instance. So let's install the new instance by clicking on this link. The installer checks for the prerequisites and if you have any prerequisites missing, it is going to show a red cross next to them. You can get all the missing prerequisites from the system requirements page of the support site. In this case, as all the prerequisites are already installed, click on next. Accept the terms of the agreement. In this step, you'll enter the name of your dashboard instance. As a best practice, I would recommend that you include the version number that you're installing in the instance name, such as So in this example, the name that I've entered signifies that this, uh, this instance is of version 404, revision 3. And instance 1 denotes that it's the first instance of this version. Following this kind of a naming convention is helpful when in cases when you have more than one instance installed on your system. So once you've finalized the name, click on Next. This is the default path that the instance will be installed in. You can change it if you want, but I would recommend that you keep this default setting. Dundas Dashboard stores its data in two application databases, the Data Store database and the Sync database, which store everything in the application, including all the dashboards, users, groups, security settings, etc. These databases can reside on a local instance of the SQL Server or a remote instance running on a separate server. This step gives you the options to either create new databases or use existing ones. If you want to use the existing database option, then your instance will be linked to the application databases of an existing instance. Although I would not recommend linking two instances to the same set of application databases. The third option is the clone option, which will make a copy of your existing databases and it will link this new instance to the new copies of the databases. And this is usually used when you are upgrading 
your current instance but you want to preserve the old version as well and you want to run both the old and the new version simultaneously. In this example I'm going to create new dashboard databases so select this option and click on next. In this step specify the name of the database server instance that will host the application databases. You can type the name manually but I recommend that you use the drop down which will appear when you click on this arrow and you'll be able to choose your server from the list that appears. In this example the SQL server is located on the same machine as the web server so I'm just going to use localhost as the name of the database server. Next choose the authentication method. In this example I, I'll use Windows authentication but if you decide to go with the SQL server authentication make sure that the login ID and the password that you specify belongs to an account with uh, which has database create permissions. This is the name of the data store database that will be created. You can change it uh, to your to the name that you want but uh, just make sure that the database does not already exist on the server although I would recommend that you keep the default setting as shown here. So the next step is to configure the sync database. In this example, I'm going to use the same SQL connection settings as I had described on the data store. You can uh, choose to specify your own uh, SQL connection settings if you want. And this is the sync database name that gets created. Since the dashboard is a web application, you'll need to configure it on your IIS instance, either as a new website running on its own port or as a new virtual directory in an existing website. For this example, I'm going to create a new website installed on this port. This is the web application name that gets created by default. You can change it if you want. The client access policy allows you to have a cross domain access which lets the application to access resources from locations that are outside the site of origin and it lets this uh, application to consume existing services on the web. So I'm going to leave this checked for this example. So once you finalize click on next. In this step, you'll set up the application pool credentials, which is the system identity that is used to run the dashboard application pool, which is a standard uh, IIS app pool that controls what permissions the application will have while it is running. So you have four options to set the identity. One is the local network service account, which is the if the dashboard and your settings database are running on the same machine. You can use the local service. If the local services don't involve any networking, the local system account usually runs all the local system processes. And uh, you can also use a specific user ID and password instead of using the system accounts. This is us useful if your sys settings database is on another machine and it needs a specific user for access. In this example, I'm going to use a network service account. I'm going to use the same identity to run the scheduler service. You can use um, a separate identity if you want. The scheduler service is a service which is used to run all the schedule tasks on the dashboard application. One thing to note here is that whichever identity that you choose, make sure that it has the required permissions to query the Active Directory. So once you've set this up, click on Next. In this step, you'll configure the administrator account for the dashboard application. 
The username and password that you'll be specifying here will be used to log into the dashboard for the first time once the installation is complete. You can change the username if you want, but I'd recommend that you keep admin as the username for easier reference in the future. If you lose the password for this account, keep in mind that there is a reset uh, admin password tool that you can use to reset the administrator password. So I'm going to give a, a password to this account. And specify an email address. Once you have set this up, click on Next. For this example, I'm going to use the evaluation license, uh, but if you have a license file, you can install it from here by clicking on Browse button. If you choose to skip this step and uh, or you don't have the license file, or if you get the license file in the future, you can always install it using the License Installer tool that comes with the program. Select the processor type and click on Next. This is the email server configuration screen uh, which lets you configure the email delivery provider, which is needed if you want to set up and send out email notifications from the dashboard. If you want to set this up now, then all you have to do is specify the delivery method and specify the email address from which the notifications are going to go through and specify the email host. Make sure that the email account that you specify here has the permissions to send the emails from your company's SMTP server. You can skip this step for now uh, as I'm going to do right now and uh, if you choose to skip this at this point then you can always set it up at a later stage manually. The dashboard application comes with a sample project called Sonatica, which is uh, which contains sample dashboards and other related setup uh, that come along with those dashboards. This would enable you to view and study um, how the dashboards have been created and what the process involved is. You can choose to install this later from the deployment center, but I would highly recommend that you install it uh, within this process so that once you open the dashboard application you have the project ready with you and you can start studying and using it. In this step uh, you'll be configuring the mobile web service which is a um, service that is needed if you want to use the dashboard mobile applications. You can set it up at a later stage, but if you want to set it up right now, then uh, you can create it as either a new website installed on its own port, or you can also create a new virtual directory within an existing website. This is the path that it gets installed on, and this is the web application name that gets created. Click on Next, and so once you're done with all the setup, review the details in this screen. And if you want to change any of the settings, then you can simply go back and change the settings. And once you come back, those change settings will reflect in the summary that you see here. So once you've finalized all the settings, I'd recommend that you take a printout of these uh, settings for future reference. And once you are uh, once you've finalized everything, then click on Install. So once the installation is complete, click on Finish, which is going to take you to the installation summary screen. So here it says Dundas dashboard installation was successful. If there was any problem with the installation, then it's going to show the message uh, and it's going to show a red cross next to the step which had the problem. In case uh, you did face any problems, then you can always go through the installation log that gets created and which will tell you where uh, the problem is so that you can go back and rectify 
the issue but now that the installation is successful you can always review the log at every stage of the process go through the readme file which contains all the documentation and once you are set this is the link that you will be using to launch the dashboard application the first part of the link specifies the server on which the dashboard is installed on and the second part specifies the port number that the dashboard application is installed on so click on it to open the application When you launch the application for the very first time, then it's going to ask you for allocating additional storage space to operate correctly. Uh, this is a silver light requirement, and once you allocate the space, it's not going to ask you for this again. So here, specify the admin username and password that you had specified during the installation. So once you're successfully logged in, the application opens up and you can start using it. As you can see, this is the Sonatica performance project that was installed and any new project that you create, you can see it under this list. And these are all the dashboard objects that you will use to create your dashboards. So all these steps that I mentioned in this video can be found on our support site using the links shown on your screen. Just make sure that you are set with all the system requirements and you download the installer. The process that I described in this example uh, is the process of advanced installation and express installation is the minimum configuration that I had specified earlier on in the video. So thank you for watching and if you have any questions you can visit our support site at support.dundas.com or contact Dundas support using the contact information shown on your screen. So thank you very much.